Hello everybody. I've been asked by a few people on Facebook how I do a background. Now I tend to do kind of blurry, wet and wet backgrounds. So the idea would be with this blue tip for example, let's take that one off. I've used masking fluid um, to paint the inside of the bird and the branch of which it's sat on, or in this case it's like a log. And when that's nice and tacky, you know it's dry, okay, believe it or not, and that's ready to be painted on from here on. So what I'll need to do is wet the background and whilst it's wet, drop the paint in. Now, I tend not to um, work on it too long because the paint starts to dry and then you end up with kind of blotchy areas or kind of cauliflower marks. For this, I'm going to be using sap green, burnt umber, and also Windsor lemon as well. And we'll go from there. Sometimes I use pan paint, sometimes I use tubes. Very often I use tube paint if it's going to be for the background because it's just a bit easier and a bit quicker to kind of get the washes mixed up ready. Okay, let's see how it goes. Right, so first thing I want to do is wet the background, okay, making sure that I don't wet inside the masked off area. Alright, let's do all that. Make sure it's thoroughly wet. Sometimes you can work your brush, this is a very soft bristle brush, a bit like a makeup brush really, very, very soft. Not that I wear makeup, of course. <laughs> Work it into the paper, so it doesn't just lie flat on the paper. Okay. Make sure there's no bits lying around there. And you probably find that you'll need to do it two or three times, just to make sure that the water is within the nap of the paper. All right. And this blue tip has got a little, little worm in its mouth, which is quite good. Um, and this is a, a photograph by an excellent photographer called Pete Blanchard. The paper I'm using is Bockingford, it's 140 pound 300 GSM, and it's got a medium texture, which is ideal for this. I mean, I tend to work. Detail work, obviously, if you want to do very detailed work, you'd use hot press paper. But when I need to apply a background, I tend to use um, a textured paper because obviously the, the paint tends to lie better within the paper. Okay. Now, what we need to make sure is that this is not running like a waterfall because if it is, it's too wet. So you want it so it's got a shine on it. And it's soaked into the paper quite well. I'm just going to go over one more time, I think. If it's like a waterfall, you find the paint will just simply run down the paper and you lose the effect that you want. Well, it depends on the effect you want. If you want to do a, a sky, Yeah, if you want to do a sky, then therefore you might want it to run down the paper so you can tap the, the board, pick up the board, I always have it on a separate piece of board, and tap it to its side so you've got like a streaky lines coming down the sky. Get some lovely effects through that. So make sure all the edges, it's always the edges that tend to dry the quickest on the paper. So, I think that's about that. I'm going to use a larger brush. Uh, the one I'll probably use is a size 12. It's a very old brush, but it tends to work quite well. I'm going to start with a lemon yellow, which is a winter lemon. And you can stab that on. It's very bright, I know. But um, I want it to be bright initially. That will tone down when I get some more colour over the top. Okay, just wiggle it around in places. It doesn't have to be precise. It's going to be a very basic kind of blurry background. And probably a little bit more there to intensify it a little bit. And then I'm going to go for sap green, using the side of the brush, just to wiggle it in. Wiggle and jiggle, that's all I tend to do. No, I can't dance, if that's what you're thinking. Just wiggle it around and drop it into the paper, leaving gaps here and there. Don't completely cover the, the yellow which you just put on. You want that to show through. If it's strong in places, move it around. And a little bit more. 
I want this to be reasonably darkish because the blue is quite a light colour so I need it to stand out against the background. Just pick off any little areas whilst it's nice and wet. That wasn't very nice, okay. And then a little bit of burnt under just to kind of add a variation to the colour a little bit. It's going to mix in with the green. Just a little bit in places, not too much, don't overdo it. Just to add that little bit extra colour. I tend to use no more than three or even four colours for a background because otherwise it can look, start to look quite muddy. You want to try and keep it as fresh as possible so not to overwork it. And remember the thing with the background is that once it starts to dry, leave it. Leave it alone, don't touch it. Because you tend to find you end up with these big cauliflower marks. Let's put a little more green in there, I think. And that's something you want to try and avoid is cauliflower marks everywhere. Okay. And I think I'll put a little bit more around there very quickly. It's starting to dry. So I'm thinking, oh, okay. When it starts to dry, it's time to think about leaving it be. Put a little bit more yellow in there, mix it in. I think that's about it. All I would suggest then, you can see all these run areas, I put my board at a slight angle. Using a, a damp clean brush, just lift off any runs. And if it's building up in places like there, just tap it with the tip of the brush and here look. Just tap it. Just to take it off. And the same with here as well. Look, just a little bit. Just to tap it once it's nice and wet. Just take off that run. Well, I just made a very hard line when you take the masking fluid off. The masking fluid I'll take off probably in a couple of hours. I want to make sure it's nice and dry. It's going to bone dry that paper before you remove the masking fluid, otherwise you'll end up tearing the paper, which you don't want to be doing. Okay, so if I tap that now, just to kind of make the paint run, and I think what we'll do, we'll leave that to dry now and see what happens. Okay? See you in a minute. Okay, as you can see it's now dried. Uh, the background has dried obviously a lot lighter, usually around and 40% lighter than the um, than the, when you first put the wash on. So now what we need to do is remove the masking fluid. And all I do, make sure you've got a very dry, clean finger. Okay. And from the outside in, start peeling off the masking fluid. If you peel off to the outside, if it does tear the paper, you don't want it tearing into the background. Because if it tears into the bird, for example, in this case, you are able to kind of cover it with some paint later on. Whereas trying to um, repair the background can be very very tricky. So we'll just peel this off, pushing in towards the bird. Like so. Once again a very dry finger, clean. I tend to use blue masking fluid because I can see where I've put it. Um, but generally any masking fluid will suffice. That's coming off quite nice. It's a little bit thick in places so be careful when it does that because it can sometimes cause the paper to tear. Some people pull it off as well but I prefer to kind of just carefully from the outside end just peel it off gradually as you can see it's unusual stuff this masking fluid isn't it but it's very clever the way that it reserves the white of the paper when you put the masking fluid on try not to put it on too thick because then it's harder to kind of get it off and there's, there's also more chance it can tear the paper I find anyway and I'm sure different masking fluids have different properties and behave differently 
but this SAA blue mask I find is perfect for the job. So there we go, and that's how to do a background, or how I do a background, and all I would need to do in this case now is to get my drawing, trace it back over the top, I've got some pencil marks, reference marks, where I'm going to lay my drawing to, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to paint a background. Take care. Bye.